Well, welcome, welcome again. Hello. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with another episode. Um, this has been actually requested by quite a few people. Uh, it's regarding the higher taxes, more audits, and here's how increased IRS funding could affect you. You. <laughs> so how is that going to affect? Now, just a couple of weeks ago, if you want to welcome to go and actually watch that video or listen to the audio file, because I did mention that the Inflation Reduction Act that President Biden signed uh, right not even, I think it was at the end of August, really opened a can of worms. So in this like I said, episode, I'm going to jump a little bit more uh, in depth about the $80 billion that was given a grant to uh, the IRS. And the main purpose behind that, yes, is to increase audits. Because the only way that really internal revenue makes a lot more money than just reviewing regular tax returns is going back to some of these older returns that maybe they were overseen. And then there was mistakes that during 2020, it was a very difficult year, as we all know, it was a global epidemic. And IRS have lost more than, I would say about 30% of their staff. They had to cut down, they had no choice. And because of that, a lot of things, right, fell between the cracks. Why I'm telling this, if you don't know who I am, my name is Liz Soria. I am a tax expert and a really proactive accountant. I've been doing this for more than 17 years. And I'm sharing in, in a nutshell videos under 15 minutes, 10 minutes or less information that I really think is valuable to you. And I discuss about different, different topics. You can go and check my channel later on and you can find a lot of things, how to invest, how to save in taxes and many other things. But let's go ahead and jump back into this one because this is important. I think that one of the things I wanted to see, and like I said, it says it right here, Inflation Reduction Act, okay? And one of the things that I, 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 I see from this one, and this is such a true fact, see a lot of people are saying that What's going to happen is that they think that they can keep out of rates from rising beyond the recent rates of household earning less than $400,000. Now, I don't know about you, but I think people making less than $400,000 down to like maybe one fifty, dollars it's not a very large percentage. <laughs> the majority of, at least here in the U.S., I would say to make it under a hundred thousand. That is the majority. The minority are making above maybe a quarter of a million dollars, especially over four hundred thousand dollars. Now, supposedly this bill that approved the eighty billion dollars again with the big B, um, it was to really generate more money through the internal revenue to the government back. Um, there's going to be a lot of audits more happening. Why? Because they need to make up the money. My concern here says that based on this article that it says for the for the 2019 tax year, just 0.17, that's less than a quarter, of taxpayer earnings between 25 and 200,000 per year were audited. OK, according to a May report from the Government Accountability Office, or what we call the GAO, the same percent of taxpayers earning between two and five hundred thousand dollars per year were audited. So think about that. They almost making a comparable that less than a quarter, right? Zero point seventeen. OK of taxpayer earning less than twenty five thousand dollars to two hundred that pretty much out of the same percentage that somebody who made over $200,000. Now, you would say, what would that happen? What if the first thing happens with 25,000, you know, most, you know, uh, earners is that usually they're eligible to get, get what is considered right here, the earned loan wages is called the EITC credit. And a lot of them incorrectly, they use it. Um, and it has created some financial issues in their tax return. And what has happened is really this income was done for low income 
um, households where they still have to work. So in other words, they're, it's mandated that they have to work uh, as they were cutting down back in the days for the welfare because it was a major uh, expense that the government was having. So they came up with all these other additional credits uh, to pretty much motivate people, yes, motivate them uh, to really go back to the, you know, to the workforce, right? And one of them was to earn income tax credits. So imagine that they're making it comparable between a $200,000 to $400,000 earner to somebody who's making less than 25 and they're always getting out of the same, or I dare to say even more, because of that earned income credit. So unfortunately, I always say that the, you know, the low, the low hanging fruit is the one that gets usually hit hardest. And that's the bottom people. Uh, why? Because the majority of times, if you think about it, uh, you know, in a sense this year, would the Inflation Reduction Act make your taxes go up? As I said, here's another bit of good news. There's a significant chance that your tax bill, this is right here, your tax bill, won't get won't go up in any meaningful way as a result of the Inflation Reduction Act. Now, that's to me questionable, and I've been doing taxes for, for almost close to two decades now. Woo, makes me feel really old. <laughs> Anyhow, my sense, uh, my dress sense of humor, I have to over kick in one way or another. And my concern is that even though it's saying that it shouldn't be affecting, I think it's going to be the opposite, like I said. Unfortunately, I see that the majority of people... Um, usually they have more issues when they earn less because they don't have legal representation. Remember that when taxes become more complex as people or businesses, they invest in what? In different assets. The majority of people who are making less than twenty five you know, $25,000 a year, or I even dare less than $50,000, okay? The majority of those people, most of them don't even barely have a savings. They hardly especially have, if they're lucky, they might have their only home over the, what I call the roof over their heads, hopefully. Uh, if not, they're probably renting the majority. Um, so they don't have barely any investments in the stock market or crypto or anything else. They just live in paycheck by paycheck, uh, which is a very big majority uh, here in our country. And the sad part is that I am concerned um, and I truly, truly mean this with, with a lot of honesty with what has happened with this because those people, again, because they have such a low income, uh, they cannot, cannot hire, uh, you know, contract an attorney uh, to represent them. So what's going to happen is that they will get hit a lot harder. And here's another thing which is really interesting that I want to share with you is that, again, if you under that 25 or even I dare to say the ones between 25 and $50,000 gross salaries per year, they're going to probably get hit the hardest. Even though they tell you it's not, I'm suspicious they will. And again, the reason behind it, and I want to share this, uh, and again, it comes from my experience in, in finding many tax return and doing tax planning, and, you know, always learning about, you know, tax loopholes to help taxpayers like you um, stop overpaying in taxes. Because people say, tell me, it's not fair, Liz, it's not fair. It's never fair that, you know, the rich always gets richer, as we heard, and they pay less taxes. It's true. So let me give you an example. If you are in a 0% all the way to 24, 24% is considered the tax table in the year of 2022. Due to inflation, that tax table increases a little bit, okay? Now, you're getting taxed between 0% to 22, 24%. Let me correct myself. Now, people that earn money through the stocks, crypto, or even real estate, the majority, okay, they pay less than 20%. So picture that for a moment. You're paying more out of your paycheck with Social Security, Medicare, in federal withholding than somebody who owns millions of dollars. Yes, it sounds unfair, but this is how the system has been built. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> so I'm just passing on the message. And unfortunately, what I tell people, because the system is built this way, yes, they're trying to fill the gap. You know how? 
by increasing the capital gain taxes, instead of being maximum 20%, they're trying to increase it double by 40%. Because they feel that a lot of people, again, in the top, are paying the least taxes because remember, if they don't sell those assets, if I have cryptos, or let's say I have Amazon, just give you an idea, or Microsoft, or Apple, there are the big hits or the big hot, you know, crypto, I'm sorry, you know, the, the hot, sorry, uh, stocks, then what's going to happen that as long as I don't sell, I have not recognized any gains. Therefore, I can hold that same stock for five years, 10 years, or even until I die. And guess what? My Here's my next, you know, uh, generation. They're going to pick up those stocks or even in this case, yes, crypto. If I bought my Bitcoin or I bought my Ethereum, which I only believe those are the two, in my personal opinion, I know there's many other ones out there, but I feel they're, they're probably one of the all this one, I compare them to silver, silver and gold, in other words. And I think, yes, that's a great investment for the old fashioned, but I still think it works as a phenomenal asset. It's tangible. You can hold it, you can save it, you can have it. But here's going back why I'm bringing all this because, again, the rich people have different ways. They have legal representation. If they get audited, they send the letter to, you know, their attorney firm. They review it. They represent them. They take care of it. And they can go back to business. You, as a regular taxpayer, unfortunately, do not have that financial means. And that's why I'm going to tell people under $50,000, please be cautious any money that you're making, especially if you're also being self-employed, there's going to be a lot more audits for Schedule C's, okay? That's going to increase as it is. It's always been higher. And I think this is going to really, really increase uh, really the audits for internal revenue. Like I said, this $80 billion has been granted. You can go back and look at that video that I recorded a couple of weeks ago. It goes a lot more in detail about what the Inflation Reduction Act that Biden signed and that also get a relief for the student loans and many other things for um, the Medicare prescription and many other things that I talked in detail. You can go and check that one out later on. But this one, I want to really emphasize and bring even more to your attention to please be cautious when you're finding your return. Again, especially if you have a Schedule C, um, they are going to be auditing all, a lot more to these people. And unfortunately, it's just how it's going to be. I hope I'm wrong. But based on what I know, it sounds like you are going to be the one hit harder. So again, just be cautious. Make sure you're reporting your income. Because anybody under 25, what they're doing is they're taking your tax return and they're scanning them in their computer system. That's how it's done. That's why so many people with earned income credit and the child tax credit and many other additional credits, they're getting targeted so hard because they do it through the computer system. See, now other complex tax returns, like I said, for businesses and multimillionaires, it takes a lot more to research because they have to show evidence that that's correct, that the information they provided in the return was incorrect or maybe it was humanly a mistake in your situation is very different because these are credits that the government is giving you and they're going to be a lot more strict about it so anyhow i hope this information has helped some way and like i said like share and subscribe i'm providing all this free information sometimes it takes me hours um to be able to pick the best articles and really share this info with you because I know there's a lot of information out there that is not good at all. Um, you know, people just repeating things that they hear from someone else. Please always go to the right source. Uh, get the people who have been professionally working in their careers in the industry like myself and, and get the help. Make sure that your taxes are being filed correctly, the things are being done right. Because if not, you can open a can of worms and an audit right now is costing more than $5,000. It's not worth it. And it will be uh, you know, something very costly. Again, if your income is under $50,000, uh, it could cost you a big headache and thousands of dollars out of pocket. So again, I hope my information has helped. And like I said, share, like, and I will be seeing you in the next episode.